Hi, Jills. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm here today to demonstrate uh, to all of our lovely viewers out there um, the Heimlich Maneuver on dogs. So here at Red Dog Blue Cat, we um, are big advocates of feeding fresh raw food and that does include bones. So while we are aware that bones do come with some hazards, um, we do actually have a bone guide that will guide you through um, to see which bones will be safe for your dog, dependent on its size as well as the type of chewer that it is. So um, any dog can run into a problem choking. So we do want to make sure that we are um, equipped with at least um, some skills to um, um, a recognize that that is happening and be hopefully help them out um, before it becomes a big problem. After something uh, like this happens, any kind of um, choking event or, or whatnot, it is a good idea to get your dog checked out or your cat checked out by um, a vet uh, just to make sure there wasn't any damage or anything done um, along the way when, when the event happened. So this is my little dog Chaos. She's a little Jack Russell Terrier. She's going to be helping us today. So hopefully she's a willing participant in our demonstration. <laughs> To do the Heimlich maneuver on your dog, um, should they be choking, first things you want to do is make sure that there's nothing easily accessible in their mouth that you can remove. Um, once you've checked that, if everything's um, safe to check that, then you can actually have a, have a look at them. Um, you want to find the point on their tummy where their ribs end, so she has a nice little tuck here. Um, that's the, the point where you want to put the pressure on. With a larger dog, um, you're going to need a little bit more pressure. With a small dog like her, she's pretty small. You can probably just use, use a little bit of pressure with your fingers, but what you should do is make a little fist, go up and under, and then cover your, your, your fist with your other, your other hand. Um, and what you want to do is go up and in towards her. So you're kind of pushing the pressure up out towards her mouth. So if you think about her, um, her windpipe or whatnot going straight down this way, you're going to be pushing things out so you're going to get a push of air to get dislodged. With a larger dog, you're going to need a little bit more pressure and sometimes what you need um, is actually to stand them up. Her spot right here where her ribs end, that's where you want to be putting your fist and you want to be going, you want to be going up, pressure like this. Of course a little bit harder. Huh? Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate a second way that you may be able to do Heimlich on your dog. Um, since some dogs don't like to lie on their side for prolonged periods of time, it's easier to demonstrate with this stuffed animal. So lie on their side, hopefully they haven't um, passed out and that's why they're on their side, but lie on their side, you will see on a normal dog a bit of a um, rise where their rib cage is going to be. So this dog, you don't see that, but what, you, what you're looking for is basically the peak point um, where their ribs are kind of sticking up. So in this situation, they would be on the floor, you'd, you'd be a little bit more above them. Similar to what you would do um, with the tummy one, um, you want to put them over kind of like you're doing like CPR, what you're, you're just going to do basically one quick thrust and see if you can get it dislodged at that point. You want to do this maybe up to five times, not in quick succession. One, check, check the mouth, see if then it's dislodged. If, if they're still choking, try again. Um, and make sure that if you get to that point and nothing's happening, then you need to seek veterinary care right away. In what instances should you use this maneuver on dogs? In this situation where you are sure that they're choking, that that is actually what is going on with them. So you do want to look for signs. I mean, obviously, if they're chewing on a bone or if they're eating a toy or something like um, a ball that may have gotten lodged in there, often what you're going to see is um, them looking a bit panicked. They might be pawing up their face. Um, or, or trying to get something out. Often when they're choking, they're not making any sound. So they might have their mouth open, trying to get something out, but they're not making any sound because nothing's going in, nothing's going out, right? So there's a blockage of air coming through. So you can actually have a look too at their gums. So you want to see if they're, if they're looking pale or blue, if they're nice and pink, that's a good thing. That means there's still oxygen there. If they're the other way, that's probably a bad sign. How do you know when you've been successful? Well, hopefully you see the stuff come out. However, keep in mind with a dog or a cat, they're going to have their mouth mostly closed. It's not like people like in the movies, you see it shoot across the, across the room. That's not going to happen. It's probably going to just get dislodged. So if they successfully go back to breathing um, and you see that they're now, um, their color is coming back, you still do want to check in their mouth and make sure that whatever is there, take it out. So have a look. Go in, you may see something there, you may be able to pluck it out. 
At what point should you go to the emergency vet when you've been doing this for a couple minutes? So a couple minutes is too long. Uh, what you want to do is try that little push maneuver maximum five times. If you're not getting anywhere, get out and get it done. So time is a critical factor here. Obviously, if you're not breathing for a certain amount of time, that is not a good thing with people or with dogs as well. So, um, and dogs can die from choking incidents. So you really wanna make sure that that first aid is done as immediately and make sure you know where your closest vet is um, or if somebody um, you know can give you a hand if you if you need to be able to help. Once you've been successful with this maneuver, do they need any follow-up care? Um, if you do have a choking incident um, and your dog seems absolutely fine afterwards, I still would get them checked out. Uh, thinking about what damage may have happened in the throat, it's a very difficult thing to look, even for veterinarians, especially dogs being all wiggly and whatnot. Um, she's pretty good looking in the back of her throat, um, but some dogs might not be. And, and also veterinarians have more technique in order to look into those areas than you would at home, um, different light and whatnot. They may need to be sedated to have a really good look. Things can scrape, things can cut. Pieces could still be lodged in there as well, right? If you have something that's splintering, a stick um, or something of that nature, you could still have something in there that needs to be dealt with.